today we're going to talk about parts of words that carry meaning. But before we do that, I have a word game to play with you today. We're going to play Odd Word Out today. So you might remember in Odd Word Out, you're given a group of words and you get to decide which word might be the Odd Word Out and why. Cool thing about Odd Word Out is there's no right or wrong answer, right? A word could be the Odd Word Out for any number of reasons and you get to think about why and explain. So here are our words today for Odd Word Out. Today we have pretty, prevent, pregame, and pretend. So if something is pretty, it's pleasing or nice to look at. If you prevent something, you stop it from happening. Pre-game is a party that you might go to before a football game or a basketball game. Um, and pretend, you know, is to act something out. So which word do you think might be the odd word out and why? Pretty, prevent, pre-game, and pretend. Which word do you think might be the odd word out? Hmm. You might be thinking pretty is the odd word out because it's the only word in our set without the pre-prefix. Let's check this out and see. So you probably already know that <clears throat> pre is a prefix. It comes at the beginning of a word and it means before. Let's check that prefix out in our words. Prevent. What do you do if you prevent something from happening? Hmm, you stop it before it happens. So prevent has our pre-prefix. What about pre-game? You might go to a pre-game party before you watch the Super Bowl or maybe before you go to a soccer game, right? And you celebrate with your friends before the game. So pre-game has our pre-prefix. Pretend. If you pretend something, you sort of imagine it or act it out before it might ever happen. So pretend has the pre-prefix. Pretty cool, huh? What about pretty? Is there any meaning of before in the word pretty? No. So pretty does not have the pre-prefix. So it could be the odd word out. Why else might pretty be the odd word out? You might notice that pretty is the only word in our set that has a double consonant in the middle. So it could be the odd word out for that reason. What other word might be the odd word out? Maybe you're thinking that pregame is the odd word out because it's the only word where a prefix attaches to a root word, right? In prevent, we have the pre-prefix, but we don't have a root word. In pretend, we have the pre-prefix, but we don't have the root word. In pregame, we have the pre-prefix and we have the root word. So pregame could be the odd word out for that reason. You might also be thinking that pregame is the only thing that you, the only place that you could kind of go. You could go to a pregame party. So it might be the odd word out for that reason. Pretty cool. So I'm curious to know which word you think is the odd word out and why. So today we're going to explore the prefix pre a little bit more. Before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about some things that you might already know about words. So you already know that words are made out of lots of different parts and patterns and that there are special kind of word parts that are really important because they have meaning. Sometimes those parts come at the ends of words, like in the word faster, right? That er at the end of the word means more. It's a suffix. It comes at the end of the word, it has meaning. Sometimes those parts come at the beginnings of words, like in reread, right? Or pre-game, right? Reread, re is a prefix, it means back or again. So if you reread, you read something again. Pre is a prefix, it means before. So if you go to a pre-game party, you go to a party before the big game. So prefixes come at the beginnings of words. They have meaning and they can change the meanings of words. Those are some things you probably already know. You also already know that sometimes, lots of times, prefixes attach to intact root words right, like we see in preschool, right, where you could just take the prefix off and you have that root word school, or prepaid. You just take off your pre-prefix and you have that root word paid, right? So that happens a lot with prefixes. They're just gonna hook on to words that are already intact, what we call root words, but not always. Sometimes they're going to attach to think words that, parts of words that we call roots. Roots have meaning, but they're not words on their own. Prepare is an example of a word where that happens, right? So when you prepare for something, you get ready for it before. So you might prepare 
for guests coming over by cleaning up your house before they come. Pair is not a standalone root word, right? But it does have meaning, it's a root. And what's really important is that the word prepare has a meaning of before. And that's how you know you have that pre-prefix. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna explore some words together that have the pre-prefix that might be surprising to you. They might be um, words that you know, but you didn't know had the pre-prefix. Some of these might be words that have roots or, or even root words. And some of them might have words um, where the before is used in a very literal sense. And sometimes it's used in a figurative. Let me explain what I mean. So one of the things that makes words a little bit tricky, but also really interesting and really fun, is that they can have lots of different meanings. And sometimes those meanings are what we think of as literal. Kind of, in my head, I think of it as sort of obvious, right? Like an example of that would be preheat, right? I'm gonna heat the oven before I put the food in. That's sort of a literal, obvious, sort of easy peasy meaning, right? Or pretest, right? My teacher's gonna give me a test to see what I know about something before I learn it. That's what we call a literal meaning. And then we have these more figurative meanings, like prepare, like I'm getting ready for something before it happens, or like what we saw in the word pretend, right? I'm pretending something. I'm imagining it or thinking about it or acting it out before it happens. That's what we call more figurative. So today we're gonna explore some words with pre that have some of these more interesting meanings. So let's add to our spoke. Um, start, let's start thinking about some words that we might know that we might wanna add to our spoke and talk about. So we did pretend. Let's play with the word from our odd word out. We have the word prevent. Let's add prevent. So if you prevent something, right, you stop it before it happens. So you might prevent um, rain coming into your car, right, by rolling up the windows before you get out of the car. You're preventing something. Now, if you look at that word, you'll notice vent is not a root word, but we still have that meaning of before. When you prevent something, you stop it before it happens. Hmm, what are some other words that you can think of that you think might have the pre-prefix? One word you might know is the word prefer. I'm gonna add prefer over here. So prefer. So as a reader, I prefer mysteries to science fiction. Right, I like that genre more than I like science fiction. So I'm gonna be likely to choose a mystery before I would choose a science fiction story. So let's look at prefer here for a minute. Let's take a look at that word. So what do you notice? Right, you probably notice we don't have a root word, do we? F-E-R, that's not a root word in our language. But do we have a meaning of before in the word prefer? If I prefer something, I'm going to choose it before something else. Yeah, now let's talk about that for a minute. So for example, you might prefer chocolate ice cream to vanilla ice cream. That doesn't mean that you're going to put a bowl of chocolate ice cream before a bowl of vanilla ice cream on your table, right? No, it just means that you're going to pick chocolate ice cream before you would pick vanilla ice cream. So that's what we call a more figurative or abstract meaning of before, right? The meaning of that word, but it still has that meaning of prefer. What you prefer is what you choose before something else. Now, words are connected. So a word that's connected to prefer that you might know, I'm just gonna smoke it right off of here, is the word preference. Have you ever heard that word? Preference. Your preference is what you prefer. It's what you would choose before other things. So you might have a preference for the Redskins over another team, or you might have a preference for um, soccer over football. That's what you would choose before you would choose football. Pretty cool, huh? So you see how all of these words are connected by this shared meaning of something happening before. 
whether it's writing something before or acting something out before it happens like in pretend or choosing something before you would choose something else like in preference. What about the word, here's a cool word, which you might know. This is the word preside. Have you ever heard this word? Preside. If you preside over something, you lead it. So for example, your teacher might preside over your morning meeting at school, right? She's leading your morning meeting. She's coming before your whole class in your morning meeting. Again, in that sort of figurative way, right? You might preside over a group of friends at recess. Maybe you're playing a game together and you have to make a decision and you're the one who's kind of leading the thinking, right? You're not standing right in front of your friends and pulling them along, right? And saying, come on, I'm before you. Mm -mm. You're figuratively before them, like the leader. Now see something cool? Words are connected. So here's a cool word that's connected to preside. Let's see if you can figure it out. So a person who presides sometimes might be called the president. You see that? The president is a person who comes before other people, right, in a leadership way. So your mom or your dad might be president of the PTA at your school, or maybe they're president of a group at your church, right? They're coming before other people and leading them. Is that literal or is that figurative? Figurative, right? But you see how they are connected. So one of the things that prefixes can help us with is they can help us not just figure out meanings of words, but they can help us see connections in words. All of these words are connected by a shared meaning of something happening before. Sometimes it's gonna be really sort of obvious, sort of literal, right? Like, um, prepaid, right? I paid for all the minutes on my cell phone before I use them. And sometimes it's going to be more abstract or figurative, like preside, like I led a group of people so I came before them. So as you're reading and as you're writing, and as you're working with words with prefixes, just kind of be curious and stop and ask yourself, where is the meaning of before in that word? And that can really help you think about what that word means and what other words you might know that might be connected to that word. And we'll play with this some more tomorrow. Thanks.